Monteverde is one of Costa Rica's most famous ecotourism destinations. Today I'm gonna explore the amazing cloud forests and hanging bridges of Monteverde and a lot more. Around the year 3000 BC, there were small farming villages in this area, and they grew into more complex chiefdoms around 300 to 800 AD. There was a great population decline here after 1300 AD though, and some people speculate that it had to do with the Arenal volcano erupting. In 1502, the Spanish made landfall in Costa Rica, but this place was never really heavily populated back then. That changed around 1950, though, when American Quakers came to Monteverde to avoid the Korean War draft. The Quakers were pacifists and apparently got along pretty well with their Costa Rican neighbors. So they remained here, settled down, did some dairy farming, and also set aside land for conservation. That land eventually grew into the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve, as it's known today. A place that draws enormous amounts of ecotourists every year. Santa Elena is the main town near the Monteverde area, and it's not exactly a huge bustling city. Look, this is the main street. Really interesting ride. Well, actually, right now it is interesting because someone drove into the one-way streets. But still, there's not really a lot of action here. <laughs> From here, you can easily find your way to all the activities in Monteverde. And there are some restaurants and things to see, but in general, you won't be spending too much time in Santa Elena. So if you aren't gonna spend all that much time in Santa Elena, what are you gonna do in Monteverde? What kind of touristy fun can you get up to here? Well, I'm glad you asked. Come on, let me show you. When in Monteverde, you have to hike one of the cloud forest reserves. It's a must. Those people are looking at a tarantula in a hole. Bloody hell, I'm gonna skip that one. What exactly is a cloud forest? Well, it's a tropical or subtropical evergreen forest that almost perpetually has a cloud cover, typically among the canopy level. Except today it's just clear blue skies. Not many clouds today in the cloud forest, but uh, maybe there's gonna be more clouds later on. Let's see. The Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve has 2,500 species of plants, 400 bird species, 100 mammal species, and 120 reptilian species, and insects. A lot of insects, way too many in fact. Tourism didn't really start here until the 1980s. By now it's visited by more than 70,000 tourists every year. The green lungs of the earth indeed. It's so lush here. There are some types of birds that only reproduce in this area. And there are also some special types of reptiles and amphibians. For example, the golden toad. Which sounds like a Super Mario character, but it's actually a cute little froggy instead. Monteverde has a lot of orchids. In fact, it has the most amount of orchid species in the world. More than 500 types of orchids can be found in this area. There is also a lot of marsupials and sloths and rabbits and mice and other cute critters here. In general, there is a lot of life hiding among these trees. These moss and vine covered trees give off the feeling of something ancient, but I actually think they are not all that old because it's very fertile here, very lush. So. It's probably surprisingly young trees here. And you can't actually know for sure, because unlike temperate climates, you can't count the rings on the trees. There's too little variation between the seasons. Aside from giving us oxygen, the rainforest is also a treasure trove of medicinal plants, and many are actually used in modern medicine. But aside from medicinal plants, there's also a lot of poisonous plants, of course. So chances are if I were to, for example, munch down on these interesting looking plants, I'd either be 
extremely healthy or dead. A short detour from the hiking trail will take you to this viewpoint where you can see the continental divide between the Caribbean side and the Pacific side. It's quite amazing. You can actually see all the way to the Caribbean if you have good eyes. This is apparently called an elfin forest. Even if it looks uh, quite magical, it doesn't have anything to do with elves. It's more about uh, the types of trees that are accustomed to high elevation that grows here. Sometimes I think bird watchers are just as fun to watch as finding birds in the woods. <laughs> if you take another detour from the trail, you're gonna get to a waterfall. And if you're lucky, you're gonna see raccoons on the way. Monte Verde is probably most famous for its hanging bridges that give an amazing view of the surrounding treetops. The two most famous companies with these hanging bridges are Sky Adventures and Selvatura. I chose Selvatura because, well, I actually have no good reason. The hotel recommended it. I guess they get a commission, but uh, so far I'm very satisfied regardless of that. It's really a strange feeling to walk on these suspended bridges, so far up and so close to everything. I guess I'm not supposed to do that. These bridges are great for getting an incredible view at the canopy level, but they aren't really as good for getting a good view of the forest itself. A forest hike like the Monteverde Cloud Forest Reserve is a little bit better for getting a good look at all the critters and all the little nitty gritties down at the jungle level. But uh, I'm really happy that I took both of these tours. One hike and one bridge tour. Bridge number three. I think this is the highest of the bridges. 34 meters. But not the longest one. That's the next one, the fourth bridge. A child was crying as he was led off the bridge. This is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Here it is, the longest bridge. And it is pretty long, actually. The bridges creak and moan as you walk on them. It's not exactly a comforting sound when you're way up in the treetops. Let me show you the surroundings a little bit. Pretty magnificent, isn't it? Aside from the hanging bridges, there's also zip lining here. Have you ever wanted to zoom along over the rainforest at frightening speeds? Well, here's your chance. The longest zip line is actually one kilometer. The next time I do this, I'm gonna bring a beer and see if I have time to drink a beer while doing that zip line. You can also visit a reptile exhibit and a sloth sanctuary when you're at Selvatura. Let me show you a little bit of that as well. Something else you can do in Monteverde is to go on a night tour in the rainforest to see all the nocturnal animals. The bat jungle is a bat exhibit combined with a museum, intended to give visitors a unique look into the world of bats. Here you can see more than 90 live bats and find all kinds of uh, slightly useless but interesting information. Well, now I certainly know more about bats than I did before. I am educated in bats. Batucated. The guy running the place now is called Vino de Bakker. So uh, yeah, if you have an interest in bats, check this out. 
it can be a little bit tricky getting to Monte Verde. The roads aren't exactly in perfect shape, so expect a pretty long ride to get here. If you're coming here from Arenal, I highly recommend the taxi boat taxi service that takes a shortcut across Lake Arenal instead of driving all the way around. When it comes to accommodation, you won't find an extremely huge selection here. I chose a place called Pension Santa Elena and it's actually pretty good. Look, it comes with a hammock as well. I have a hammock, I can't complain. As always, you can find fancier places, but uh, this is pretty much perfect for me. Everything I need as a three-star vagabond. Monteverde has a little bit of a weird history, but the cloud forests and these hanging bridges are just amazing to see. I hope you enjoyed this little look at what you can see and do in Monteverde. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day.